everyone and welcome back to the channel here. So I'm taking a break, uh, much needed today by the way, a uh, break from work here. And I'm looking at something here, I want to read this article. This is over on uh, the Ford Authority. And this is really good news if you are a fan of the good old American V8. So the headline over at Ford Authority says, Blue Oval will double down on Ford V8, chief engineer. So, the article goes on to quote many sources, including Mr. Farley there, uh, and also the brand manager for Mustang and one of the chief engineers, that in recent years, virtually every automaker on the planet has been in the slow process of killing off their V8. And you've seen that. Um, a lot of vehicles out there reducing the uh, engine size down to, well, the V6, in most cases turbo, the point of induction is to give it uh, more ability, more torque, more horsepower, and a smaller displacement. Naturally aspirated, it has a little um, hard time producing some of those numbers, so you stuff it with air and fuel. Um, there's a lot more components there, so having that V8, naturally aspirated V8, is really good. Now, you, you could put a supercharger on that as well. You could even turbo, uh, install a turbo, and that would, you know, that would add some juice to it, but if you just want the sound of the naturally aspirated V8, you can get it and you want the torque. Um, I do know that if you're buying a new Ford truck and if you want max towing, they are going to sell you a 3.5 EcoBoost because that is where you get the most torque. And uh, however, if you get the Coyote, you can do some aftermarket stuff to it and make it produce a whole lot more horsepower So, uh, and torque as well. Anyway, let's go on and read this article. Uh, so basically, uh, car companies have been replacing those with smaller displacement three and uh, three, four, and six cylinder, you know, Jeep doing that six cylinder, that hurricane. Um, but Ford isn't giving up on the V8, and I think it's, it's really cool. There's cafe standards that they have to deal with. Um, we're going to do another video. Yes, another oil change video. I know you're just like, oh, right, another one. But where does the 10,000 mile interval come from? Well, it comes from CAFE standards. And, and this right here is that they're, they're forced to have an average fuel uh, mileage per vehicle um, that is increasingly higher. And it's hard to get it with the V8, but you're able to do it with the smaller engines, typically putting you, putting you in a smaller vehicle or a same size vehicle with smaller displacement and turbos. So that's, that's just what's happening. You know, it's been going on for years. Um, the Mustang, a lot of people like manual transmissions. You like the V8. So the Mustang is the last pony car standing right now that is configured with a V8 and with manual, and of course the 10-speed uh, transmission um, has come a long way as well. So oh, the engineer goes on, I'd like to say we're very proud to still be making the V8, added uh, Joe, global brand manager for Mustang. And when it comes to everyone else, I think it makes us really proud of what we do. I'd say it would, because if you're able to engineer a V8 that can still live with the energy EPA, whatever standards out there, is that you're able to make it work in your entire vehicle lineup, then it works. It's, remember, it's a game of averages. For every person that buys a, a Mach-E, uh, that's someone else that can buy a V8 Mustang. And it goes on throughout the, uh, the brand. I think Ford has done a really good job of spreading out the different engines and raising that average MPG which is enabling them to do what they're doing now and not pay all of the fees that have to be done for it. I think getting to a place in the economy and in politics where that's been able to happen is, is, a, is a shame. And I think it probably happened, well, a lot, a lot of the stuff happens without your knowledge and then you find out, well, something passed and, oh, guess what? Here's what it's gonna cost you or here's what's gonna hurt you or it's gonna take a freedom away or, or whatever. So I, I, I just really love the idea that Ford's been able to keep this in here. Sorry for the camera angle. It's kind of weird. Um, so the, and this is really good news. If you're a GT500 fan or a Raptor R, 
that the um, production of the 5.2 V8 present in the F-150 Raptor R is also slated to continue for the foreseeable future. So that's Ford's engine to go to when they want to just scream it down a quarter mile or give you ultimate performance and horsepower. GT500 had that engine as well as the Raptor R, supercharged, built very well. Uh, so that's, that is awesome that that, I was kind of worried, well, maybe it's just going to be the Coyote and, you know, well, no, it looks like the Predator and on is just going to keep living. So this is really good news. I just wanted to hit you with some good news. That's what we try to do on the channel. And, uh, you know, hey, American V8 in the Ford lineup is, is still here. And it looks like for the foreseeable future, it's going to be here as well. I'd love to know in the comments, what do you think? Are you excited to be able to do that? Even if you like another brand vehicle, will that bring you over to Ford for the Mustang or the or the F-150 Raptor R? Um, and, you know, there's some holdouts. People wishing that the Bronco, at least a special edition Bronco, could get a V8. If it did, it would likely be a 7.3, and it would likely be a very limited, very expensive option. However, as of right now, there is no hints or anything else that that's coming. So for right now, it is the 2.3, 2.7, and the 3.0 in the Bronco, of course, 3.0 in the Raptor. So anyway, let me know what you uh, think about the video. Please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Love to hear the comments or read the comments. And um, let's do some more videos about this V8 thing. I love it. Good news. See ya.